Welcome to Eye to Eye with me, Galvin Berkeley. On today's show, we will be discussing the baby Ivan, the baby Lisa Ivan case, and the latest developments that are going on in that particular case. And as well, we'll be talking about the issues that are going on in Kansas City. The latest news that has broke well, is that in spring of 2012, obviously next year, next spring, you can, Kansas City will have an aquarium at uh, Crown Center and it will, we'll have more details on that. And of course, I'll be talking with my good old friend, Catherine Rucker and see what she has to think on some of the topics that we've previous, previously discussed on past shows. But first, baby Lisa, we're going to be talking about baby Lisa. And baby Lisa right now is still is missing. She's not found. She's still missing. And uh, they thought that they had found her, but it was a look-alike and it was further away in Missouri. But that was not Baby Lisa. It was a look-alike of Baby Lisa. So the search still continues on Baby on the search of Baby Lisa, and uh, a high-profile attorney who is based in New York will be representing Lisa's parents, and also there is a local defense attorney that will assist with uh, that high-profile attorney. And speaking of high profile, um, that ho that high profile uh, profile attorney is named. The ho oh, let me say this: the high profile attorney is named Joe Tacopina, and Joe is from New York. Obviously, that I began to say, and uh, he's going to defend the mother and father of Lisa Ivan and uh, this this case continues to bring twists and turns that it's not even a surprise anymore um, the mother uh, of Lisa has admitted to drinking on the night of the disappearance of baby Lisa and uh, the story continues to switch up and as you may it continues to become a big issue and uh, I don't know if it's going to be accountability in this particular issue or is it mother has forgot I don't know I'm not going to judge and I'm not saying that she's guilty but something in this story and I said this when this first story had broke that this story, this story is something wrong. Something is wrong in this story. Nothing is adding up. Nothing is looking right. Not, and they did the reenactment of who could went into the window and steal a, a tenth month old baby. They've done all the searches, and the latest search uh, involved a search warrant from the court and police searched through the other home uh, that you probably seen on the local media circuit and they brought out some bags but we don't know if that's evidence or something related to the case so we're going to continue to keep you advised on this particular story and we're going to bring you the developments as it develops uh, in this particular news story so we're going to keep an eye on this story and let you know on other editions of Eye to Eye uh, here in the near future. So we're going to give a, we're going to give this case a break because doing it back to back isn't going to help me in a way. So we're going to let the story kind of build up and uh, we'll bring it to you here on Eye to Eye. On the next story. Kansas City gets an aquarium and that aquarium is expected to open uh, spring 2012 is the uh, time frame to where to where it will open there it is expected to open in the summertime of 2012 but 
they have plans to open it early. This particular aquarium is, to, is expected to bring 100 jobs to the metro area and as well it is going to be accompanied by uh, the Lego Leg uh, Discovery Center that is in the Crown Center as well as the aquarium. So that is good news for Kansas City and as well they are experimenting with bringing uh, some kind of a uh, light rail transportation and it's not going to cost as much as the Clay Chastain uh, plan and Clay Chastain still wants to go on with his lawsuit in terms of getting more uh, of his light rail plan here to Kansas City but this is what I think of Clay Clay needs to go back to wherever he came from to go dig in his little hole and stop coming into Kansas City's business it costs us money and right now we cannot afford his light rail plan we cannot afford any light rail plan right now and this is what is wrong with Kansas City we continue to spend money that we do not have let's pay down our bills first let's kind of let's kind of get rid of our bills first let's do the process of elimination with our bills first now should we get all our bills no I'm gonna be honest we should kind of be a little bit moderate they have a few bills left up on us but Kansas City credit Kansas City's credit rating is already kind of screwed anyway so what I think should happen is that we need to pay down our little bills first stop trying to jump ahead to what we need to look like we're not New York we're, we're, we are Kansas City for a reason we don't have all this stuff that other cities have we are a smaller city speaking I know we are a large metro setting like city but we're not as large as New York Philadelphia and all these other cities so let's do what we do best for our own sake stop following what we see in other cities in terms of uh, spending money now when we get the money there's nothing wrong about splurging about splurging a little bit but let's be a little bit uh, concerned about what we're doing. Let's let's manage our money a little bit better, and that's what's wrong with Kansas City. We don't want to manage that, our monies uh, in a different way. So I, I think the fiscal responsibility needs to start happening in City Hall. We don't have time to sit here and this this is what I didn't like about the Sprint Arena situation. Well, we need an arena downtown. Well, let's pay off Camper Arena first. Let's try to get a payment plan on Camper Arena first before we attempted to build uh, Sprint Arena. Because here's the deal. Back in the day, and I'm sure we have a clip of this coming up here. Uh, back in the day when we was trying to develop the light rail plan, uh, this came from a local television station, uh, WDAF TV, and the reporter now is with, excuse me, is with the Kansas City Star, the newspaper here in Kansas City. But he reported on some of the political truths that was not faced when we wanted to bring uh, the Paralite District to reality. So here's his story. We'll be right back. Truth Watch look at the claims in the ad. The new commercial from the Power and Light District uses comments from supporters. They are fair and accurate. This, though, needs more explanation. It's not going to cost us one thin dime. No taxes. Here's the complete story. Under the plan, the public will borrow up to $176 million to build streets, parking garages, and other improvements to the area. That money will be paid back by future taxes from the project. If the project fails, if there are little or no new taxes from the project, the Kansas City, Missouri Council will have to make up the difference. Now, council members can't raise your taxes, but they will have to cut spending somewhere else. Your neighborhood sidewalk, maybe, or a local park. There's also this. I was one of 75,000 people down here for the Jones store sale, and that tells me that if there's something to do down here, people will come downtown. 
It is true that thousands went to the downtown Jones store because it is closing, because not enough people shop there. The crowds came because prices were slashed. No one suggests prices will be slashed with the power and light district. Indeed, if prices are reduced, the project, which depends on sales taxes, might not pay for itself. Now, one other note. In some of its literature, district supporters say taxpayers will be okay because the city has insurance to protect the money it borrows for the project. That is not true. The city hasn't borrowed any money yet and hasn't bought any insurance. And district officials say they may not buy any insurance at all because they say the public is already protected. Well, we'll have more tonight at 9 o'clock. An in-depth look, Phil, at the very controversial but very important power and light. And vote. a very complex dual question issue on the ballot that needs to clarification. And at 9 o'clock, our viewers will get it. Welcome back, everyone. All right. Now, Kansas City has to understand about people's pockets. We're not made of money just like you're, just like uh, other people ain't made of money. Now, I'm just going to break it down to you like that. We're not made, ordinary citizens are not billionaires. We're not billionaires, and we're not going to be gazillionaires, if that's even the uh, term to use, if it is a term. We're not billionaires. So why are you keep taxing us? That's what I don't get. We're taxed enough. And with that particular plan that they put into place and everything, we are not turning a profit in Kansas City. And we need to turn a profit. But are we going to do that? I don't know. That's something that we haven't been able to do for a while, but we need to start. We need to start soon. And, I mean, uh, people are leaving Kansas City because they're taxed enough. And among other issues of crime and schools and things of that nature. So, you know, I don't know, people. We need to get Kansas City organized. We need to get Kansas City better or more uh, organized and function right. All right, moving on to the to our next little segment. Uh, I talked with my good friend Catherine Rucker. Catherine talks with me about what it, about what she thinks about the issues and the news stories that broke that broke over the past five to four shows that we've done already here on Eye to Eye. And she talks, she's very opinionated about some of these issues. So I suggest that you stay right here on Eye to Eye. And also there's a note that I'll hear from my producer that we are going to have a two-part series, serious, series, excuse me, <laughs> on this show with Catherine Rucker. So don't go away. Catherine Rucker is going to be joining me over the phone. Well, Catherine, it's been a pleasure getting talking to you. Welcome to Eye to Eye. <laughs> Right. Now you watched the show and you watched some of the things that I've talked about on the show such as the Kansas City, Missouri School District losing its accreditation, its superintendent, uh, you've also, we've also talked about Kelly Williams Bowler and uh, men and boys saying, I know you really feel strongly about Kelly Williams Bowler, but uh, then why don't we get started into um, Boy, men and boys sagging their pants. What do you think about that? Um, first of all, Galvin, um, I don't want to even think so much who has their hands sagging to the ground. Because, uh, I think that is very, I don't know, it's very, bad. yeah, right. It's successful and it's not cute. It's not cute to sag your hands. What's the point of sagging your hands? What are you accomplishing here? I mean, are you trying to be cool? Like that, that. So you trying to tell everybody else that you gay or something? No, I don't. 
Sagging their pants, sagging, right. sagging their pants in the church. That's ridiculous. Right, really. right. And, and I don't get that. Like, especially the women, like, why are you sagging your pants? Like, why are you? I mean, why are you sagging your pants? Any time, but like, why are you sagging your pants? Like, you know, like, 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 sent her daughter or daughters over to a white school district and she went to jail for falsifying documents and so forth going into that going into a white school district. Now, now if we want to talk about someone being racist now that's racist oh, I yes. think that that's racist because that's not like you know it's being in jail for living her kids so white school is a bitch okay that's commentary from people where well, she's a criminal and da 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 and she should serve she served her time and she should serve some more time and da, da, da. I'm like excuse me but you're not black right you're not black you don't you don't marry you don't have to worry about that right and I can tell it's a white guy speaking about that ain't no other way about that and I don't mean to be disrespectful but the truth is yet the truth so that's what I speak about. I speak about the truth on this program. And if people don't like it, well, guess what? There's there's a whole bunch of other channels on YouTube that you can turn to. It goes up and down. It don't go on Galvin. So, so then, you know, if you don't like it, well, just flip the channel. But, uh, <laughs> but I'm just telling the truth. There's some people that don't. You are. You are. You got to keep it real for the audience. And I had to catch myself from cussing, and which you know, that don't always work. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because uh, I, I feel strongly about some of the issues. But speaking about the Kansas City, Missouri School District, uh, what do you think about the current situations that they've went through uh, a couple of weeks ago with that? Uh, well, I've talked to you before, and I've been 
That's how I feel, but that's beside the uh, subject here. Uh, the school district, and speaking about it, they got a new uh, a new audit. It was an audit that was done on them, and they couldn't account for gift cards that they spent money on, gift cards, DVD players, iPods, and other things, and trophies, and in that audit they couldn't account for that in some assets that came from the closed schools that they uh, from the closed schools that they closed a few years back so I don't know what it is that they can't be organized and that they can't manage money right but what's going to happen and I'm, I've already predicted this on the show is that they are going to lose their accreditation and it's going to, they're not going to get it back and state takeover is likely now Am I going to be wrong? I'm a, I could be, but I don't know. I really don't know. It's an issue. Huh? They could take it back. They could. Because right now, they still got it until January the first. That's what I, that's what we understand of it of this situation right now. And uh, recently, they had a meeting on this particular issue when they lo- when they get ready to lose their accreditation. Now, what is your students or recommendations could you give uh, the parents and the students that are attending the Kansas City, Missouri School District? Uh, okay. Okay. This is what my grandma has always said. Like, I'm not going to be 100%. I'm not going to be 100%. I'm gentlemen we're getting to the end of our show and uh, this is my final word this is the quickest final word that you're going to hear in the history of eye to eye so far people we need to show more respect to one another we're, we're not kind to one another anymore we're so disrespectful we're, we don't have we don't ever say hello or good morning to one another anymore. We have a few people that do that. But the majority of us 
simply don't. So the next time you see someone and they say good morning to you, you say good morning back. Or you say good afternoon, or the, if they say good afternoon, you say good afternoon back to them. But on that note, oh, before we even leave, we're going to leave you off. We're going to leave you with the YouTube video of a man that quits his job and has a big musical surprise to leave with his boss. So until the next time here on Eye to Eye, don't forget to have your Eye to Eye conversation. And... We, I hope to see you back here on the next, excuse me, eye to eye. Have a good day, everyone. And here's the video. Guys, what is this? Guys, hold you out right now. Jared, I'm here to tell you that I'm quitting. Let's get this